Can you explain why you signed this very apocalyptic warning? Oh, for the same reason that the CEOs of uh, the top companies signed it and Jeff Hinton signed it, which is that uh, we really are at this moment in history where for the first time ever, we might be driving ourselves extinct with the technology we're building. And it doesn't have to be this way. For many years, people have warned about this and been mocked and poo-pooed. I'm <laughs> one of them, you know, and today is a day when the extinction threat goes mainstream. Well, wh why? I mean, what has happened now to suddenly make this, you know, an imminent threat worthy of lots of you coming together and sounding the alarm? What's happened is it's turned out to be much easier to build smarter than human intelligence than we thought. Things that many people thought five years ago were going to take 30, 50 years have already started happening. Microsoft already has a paper out talking about sparks of artificial general intelligence, the rather godlike kind of AI that uh, can we can loop, maybe lose control over. So, so now, so now it, that's what's really changed. You could see even as recently as the other week when we had Senate hearings here in the United States, it was so taboo to talk about extinction that none of the politicians had the courage to do that because they were afraid of getting laughed out of the room, like when they asked silly questions to Mark Zuckerberg during that hearing. And, and I'm hoping that this statement from literally a who's who of, of the leaders in the field will change that so that we can actually start having the conversation for real. I mean, you, you talk about sort of people laughing and you being poo-pooed. I mean, do you think the general public's experience of chat GPT has given us a really false sense of what AI is about because while it is impressive it's also kind of rubbish and it makes things up and it makes us think well this isn't really human intelligence that's right of, of course it's not chat gpt that we're afraid of it's what's coming soon you know when scientists started warning about the nuclear arms race it wasn't the first little react nuclear reactor built under the university of chicago football stadium that they were afraid of it was the much more powerful stuff that they realized is now coming soon. And that's where we are now. So we don't get so gloomy, though. I want to emphasize that this is not a hard problem to solve either. You know, we've already solved it in biology, for example, where no biotech company can just go in and start mass producing and selling a new medicine in Tesco supermarkets, you know, without first convincing experts in the government that it's safe and we just have to implement such a system in ai also where yeah. the onus is really on the companies to demonstrate that ever more powerful things that they don't understand are safe before they get unleashed into the world okay we have done it before we can do it again let me let me bring back in um tony cohen from the university of leeds while trying to maintain a sense of cheeriness about human extinction um <laughs> What do, you, what do you make of what you're hearing? I mean, is, is this hy hyperbole or...? Yeah, I think we do need to worry about the, the risks of AI. I, I don't think it's immediate, but I think it's a good idea to start planning now and thinking about a possible time in the future where, you know, we might have much more risk. Because uh, what's sort of, you know, perplexing is that it is those companies who are making money out of yeah. AI who are sounding the warnings. So you think, well, why, what, why are they... That's Why are they saying we need to be really careful when you'd think they just want to run away with this? Well, that's a very good question. I mean, some cynics have said that maybe it's because, you know, they're trying to regulate the competition uh, to make sure that nobody else can get up to where they are at the moment. I mean, I didn't say that. Yeah. Um, some people say. Is that, it, it well, might be well Max Tegmark, could, could you shed any light on this? I mean, you know, why are these... Yeah. What, what, why are they saying it when you would think, well, are, are they trying to own yeah. the space before anybody else can? You know, that cynical argument, uh, it does not explain why Jeff Hinton signed, for example, the godfather of AI, because he has no money to be made on this. He even quit Google before he said it. And I, I think I know why they're saying it, because I've personally spoken with Demis Asabis and Sam Altman and, and Dari Amode quite recently. I think they all realize how dangerous this is and all want 
to pause a little bit and put in place safety measures, but they realize they can't pause alone because they're just going to have their lunch eaten by the competition and get replaced as CEOs. They feel that society needs to step up and do exactly what I had pushed for before, in, as in biotech, where there are standards set by governments, by international organizations, so that they can continue making money, but the playing field becomes level, right? They cannot stop alone. They but need society's help. Could, could there ever be a that level playing field, given, you know, we, we, you know the, the world is divided. Um, big, you know, powers are secret. China and Russia and India are unlikely to sign up to the same kinds of uh, standards as, as, as the United States uh, and, uh, and others. I mean, isn't it, isn't it a bit naive to suggest you can have a global level playing field? No, actually, here I can really end on uh, inject some real optimism. Until now, it's been mainstream the idea that AI will make you very powerful. So, every, so the superpowers have all been rushing to do it first, you know, to sort of crush the other side. Whereas now that it's becoming mainstream that uh, this can drive us extinct, it totally changes the dynamics. You know, it doesn't matter anymore whether you're American or Chinese once you've gone extinct. And with this new framing, you know, none of the superpowers want, has an incentive to lose, that humanity loses control of this tech. Uh, it's a lot like biology again. You know, in the, in the early 70s, a lot of biologists started getting afraid that they were going to lose control of a human species by doing human cloning and editing the DNA of our babies. And there was a huge pressure campaign, and we didn't do that. As a result, we have the century, we've had the decades of innovation in, in biotech now, right? Where we're doing all these other great things and not the crazy, super risky stuff. This is my positive vision also for the future, that by just limiting the kind of crazy, unpredictable stuff that could drive us extinct, we can really enter an era of abundance where AI around the world can make everybody better off. Tony Cohn, do, do you think politicians and us, the media, you know, the, the public discourse are capable of understanding this to the extent that we need to. I think we to need... either regulate, understand, understand what the threat is. I think we need to, and I also think that even before we get around to regulation, you know, each one of us, as we use AI in our everyday lives, we need to be aware it is really still quite a simplistic AI system. It's it's an assistant. Use it as an assistant. Don't trust everything it says. Check the facts with some reputable source like the BBC or Channel 4 News or, you know, the original source of the quote. Don't trust the invented citations it makes up. So I think, you know, I think there is good possibility of, you know, nations, at least some nations getting together. But the other thing is, what is the specific threat? You know, and large language models can't do anything in the world apart from perhaps spread misinformation until we start getting embodied. Well, that's very dangerous, isn't it? It is dangerous, but, you know, that we, there were ways to guard against that.